I once offered to work 22 hours a day and I asked for two hours, one hour in the morning to take my daughter to school and another to read her a bedtime story. Do you know what my boss said? Don't let your personal life get in the way of your job. Which is today why I'm so delighted to be exploring a topic which means so much to me as a father, but to so many families across the UEE, the need for parent-friendly workplaces. Now, balancing that work-life mix uh, of family and uh, demands at work can be demanding in this fast-paced culture. And recognising this, the Abu Dhabi Early Childhood Authority has created its parent-friendly label programme, which is designed to encourage organisations to foster cultures which are great environments for parents to work in. Joining us today to discuss the impact of this and the future of the project is Leila Yusuf Al Hassan, Senior Advisor to the Abu Dhabi Early Childhood Authority. Now, Leila began her career in government more than two decades ago. She has overseen communications, brand management, internal communications. She's run award-winning campaigns, and she's been at the forefront of advocating for workplace policies that support parents. And we're going to dive into the remarkable results seen from this program so far. With all that said, Leila, welcome to the Mental Space Podcast. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Now... We always spring a question on our guests in the mental space. It's always the first question we ask, which is, what does mental health mean to you? How do you define it in your life? It's a great question. So I'm not a psychologist, so I'm going to give you, you know, Leila's perspective of yeah. mental health in her own life. And for me, it's that ability, that beautiful ability to cope with whatever life throws your way, right? And when, I know when I'm having poor mental health, because it manifests physically, you know, the tight shoulders, the mm -hmm. knot in my stomach mm -hmm. uh, before I'm about to embark on something or meet someone. Um, that that, that yeah. sense that, that sleepless nights, shortness of breath. So, so definitely, you know, you, you can I, really I can feel the difference. I can people relating while we're, <laughs> while we're talking. Well, I'm getting heart palpitations <laughs> kind of describing it. Okay, but so on the flip side, on the flip side, yeah, on the flip side. as a parent of young children, for me, it's those moments of calm, mm. of peace that parents look forward to um, and those bonding moments with our children. Yeah. Those moments of peace and calm. Uh, they're, they, they're rare. I, I'm going to be asking you for advice after there. this podcast. But yeah, they <laughs> are there. Uh, okay, so for our listeners and people tuning in on YouTube and watching this video, um, give them an overview of what the mission is at the Parent Friendly Label and what it aims to achieve. So the Parent Friendly Label, it's a workplace award program for the whole of the UAE. And we're, we seek out and we want to recognize forward thinking and progressive organizations out there that are offering not only supportive parent friendly policies in the workplace, but also a very understanding culture for their employees who are parents of young children. So these are organizations in the private sector and the semi-government sector. Uh, that apply to earn this label. There, these organizations are assessed against 19 criteria. So we yeah. look at their parental leave. We look at how are they offering flexible work? How are they offering family care and looking into family well-being? And just as important, what does their culture look like? So at the same time, when we while we assess their policies, yeah. we're also surveying their employees and capturing the employee voice because policy needs to align with culture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if we take it back, this is a step. What inspired the creation of the parent-friendly label? And, uh, and I'm also going to just again drill to your personal story, connect to your personal story. What inspired you to join an imp two decades in government? What inspired you to embrace this mission? Why was it so important to you? So this is what we know so far. Yeah. We know that a child's early years are the most important years of its life, right? That's when the brain is developing. That's when intervention makes the most sense. Yeah. We also know, especially also when it comes to our diverse community here in the UAE, that there are a lot of people, a lot of especially expatriates, who do not have the family support network around them. Yeah. So yeah. when they become parents here in the UAE, they're often times alone. Yeah. They don't have the grandfather, the grandmother here in the country to support them. Yeah. We also know that parents are struggling to spend quality time with their children. And when we surveyed them, they usually cited work. Finally, we know that workplaces have a role in this. They have a responsibility towards their employees in terms of supporting them. And it makes business sense, Scott. 
It just makes business sense from a motivation oh, perspective, so from good. a retention right, perspective. We are absolutely going to productivity. Circle back to this. Yeah, we you know, it just makes good time. business sense to good support your employees. That's when they're going to stay loyal. That's when yeah. they're going to stay. That's when they're going to be the most productive, right? Other than it being the right thing to do to yeah. act like a human when you're a manager and be compassionate and supportive and a great yeah. listener. Yeah. Other than that, we are seeing tangible business outcomes. We're seeing the positive impact from organizations. They're coming back to us and talking about how great this is when they're trying to recruit, how these are part of the conversations and interviews. Yeah. When you interview someone these days, uh, Scott, they will ask about flexibility. Absolutely. You need to have a very clear policy in place. You need to understand who you are and where you stand as an organization when it comes to flexible work. Why do you think the penny hasn't dropped, as we say in the UK yet, with organizations? Is it just because it's you know, change is difficult and sometimes it's easier just to do things the way it's always been done? And also, how does your work align with the core values and the mission of the UEE? Because we know that the UE constantly is on this journey to try and be one of the happiest places on the planet. It wants talent to thrive here. Look, I think we often talk about the future of work as if it's something that sits outside, somewhere out there in the world, but it's not. Yeah. It's happening right here in the UAE. We are seeing the change, Scott. Yeah. We're seeing more and more organizations start to have the conversations internally what about uh, flexible work? How does that affect productivity? Parental leave, can we give a bit more support when someone has a child of determination? Mm -hmm. When someone is, uh, has multiple births, stillbirth, miscarriage, how can we go above and beyond what the law is requiring us to do? Mm -hmm. How can we do the right thing? So those conversations are happening right now. We have today 17 organizations that have earned the parent-friendly label. And it's been a long journey for some of them. And it's been a learning journey. But they've started, they've taken that first step. And this is why we're, we're trying to or, or encourage more and more organizations to apply to earn the label. Yeah. Because really they have nothing to lose. As soon as they start their application, they're on a learning curve, right? So they're, they're, they've started their journey, they've started the conversations. And every applicant, Scott, regardless of the outcome of their application to earn the parent-friendly label, receives a free customized feedback report. It's almost free consultancy, Scott, this right? Is, this, is <laughs> this is interesting as well, because often in organizations we find that uh, it's almost like, how do we get started? Like they don't know how to get started. They, you know, even if they were willing. So Simple. it's just, Listen. just start. Listen to your employees. Yeah. Gather employees. Listen to their parents. What have you been offering so far? How else can you support them? What does work-life well, balance actually mean to them? From those 17 then that you've seen, what are some of the key ways that you've seen those organizations implementing the parent-friendly Immediately label. when I think of these organizations, I get so happy, Scott. I have like a huge smile because yeah. they're leading the way. Yeah. They're, what they're doing is so inspiring, yeah. right? Whether it's from a policy perspective or whether it's culture. So just to give you a few examples, they've gone above and beyond what a typical parental leave policy looks like, right? So they've looked into how can we support someone in an additionally if they have a child of determination, mm -hmm. right? How can we support someone so that it's a flexible parental leave so that they can take it when they need it, yeah. right? They've increased paternal leave for fathers. Involved fatherhood is also good for fathers. Absolutely. They've realized that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right? The outcomes from a health perspective for the father, for the child. Uh, we've seen research that shows that the child's test scores later on in life are higher because the father was involved at the newborn stage. We're seeing research that shows how the marriage is strengthened because the father was there for her and her in, yeah. in the most in the sleepless nights, right? And <laughs> was there for the child, holding the child. And so all that research is pointing to why this just makes sense for the par for the whole ecosystem, right? Yeah. The marriage, the child's life, the father's life. And these organizations are realizing that. They're paying attention. We're also seeing some really interesting, innovative solutions. Mm when it comes to a company that may not be able to offer flexible working. Yeah. So for example, the education sector, yeah, yeah. teachers need to be in the classroom. You can't phone it in. Well, you can work from home. You can work from home. Right? There is remote learning. Well, there, were, there are so right? many sectors though. But it's not the yeah. typical way and it's not the nature yeah. of the business. Yeah. There. But they are coming up with innovative ways of how can we still support a teacher who is a parent of a young child, but still uh, respect the nature of the business and still she's able to, he or she's able to uh, continue their responsibility. Yeah. So that innovation is what we're celebrating at the parent-friendly label. 
I loved because we were there, you know, mental were there when you launched your first, your inaugural impact report. And we had this great panel session. One of the insights that came, I think it was from Dr. Salia from the Lighthouse Arabia, but she was talking about, you know, when we talk about parental guilt, often as parents, we're guilty from being away from our children. You know, we feel yeah. guilty. But that whole notion of actually present parents, parents were able to be present in those key moments yeah. when they need to be, make more present employees and when we look at you know the cost of disengaged employees in organizations again if we come back to you know the, the pnl i think it was 10.3 billion dollars a yeah. year here 25 billion dollars a year in saudi arabia globally uh 11.3 trillion i think lost yeah. in disengaged employees so the benefits are really there yes and, and what that report that you mentioned, so this is the impact report that we yes. first released, yes. uh, uh, impact of the program so far. And what it showed, Scott, also were really three interesting trends, right? So we see this trend of moving away from the offering of the perks, what I call the free tickets, right? Uh, the the, the one-off initiatives yeah. trying to make employees happy. Yeah. We're seeing that move away and that shift away from that towards more sustainable policies in place, yeah. clear terms in their co in employees' contracts when it comes to flexible work. Yeah. The other trend we're seeing is this emphasis on the manager's role. We always knew people leave managers and not organizations. Yeah. We know that. But what, 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 this, what the report showed us was this emphasis that the more the manager applies policies clearly and consistently, especially parent-friendly policies, the more the employee is likely to recommend that place to work to their friends and family. Yeah. And we know that's such a powerful thing to have the employee be your ambassador and be your yeah. advocate out there. It's the best thing, right? It w always confuses me about why this still isn't standard business practice is all the win-wins. Because yeah. if you talk about, I mean, there's research out there right now that says actually 40% of employees don't actually know what they're doing because they haven't had a clear guidelines set by their managers. Yeah. We see that managers have an outsized role on people's mental health, employees' mental health, 70% yeah. versus 30%. So you get all that right yeah. and you have a company that's headed in the right direction. Exactly. And you literally five minutes, 10 minutes ago said, these 17 companies are leaders they're leading the way. They're standing out. They're leading the way in, in kind of promoting well-being. For families. Why would you not want that label? Look, I think uh, you mentioned this fear yeah. of, um, or this, this need to have employees there, right? This, this, this need for them to be clocking in and clocking out. And I think what it stems and what it's related to is we have weak performance management in a lot of organizations. Mm -hmm unfortunately, in yeah. the UAE, right? And what you what that requires you to do when you do offer flexible working is to tighten your performance management and to have very clear communication between manager and employee of what I actually expect from you. Mm. So one of the, the beautiful things that we're seeing more and more now in the UAE is this increase of, uh, of trust, yes. of autonomy. Go and do your work where you need to, to do it, right? We've clearly communicated manager to employee what you need to deliver, where you deliver it, how you're delivering it and everything, we can we can talk about that. But I really don't need you to be present in the office to do it. Was there anything else that leapt out of the, the impact report? I fear you were talking about three trends and I fear I quit you off at this. Uh, so the third trend. Sorry. So the third I am trend. No, I was My you. wife talks about it all the time. Like, Scott, shut up. <laughs> no, please don't shut up about <laughs> mental health. You're doing a great job. The third trend that we saw from this report was this shift from... Uh, practices and case by case. And what I mean by that is when we, a lot of the organizations that we went to in the beginning of their journeys said, well, yeah, I let him go and pick up his uh, child case by case. He just needs to come and ask for approval. Mm. We are seeing a shift away from that. We're seeing clear policies, clear communication of what is okay, what is when you have flexibility, uh, what that actually means. We're seeing this concept of parenting out loud, Scott, where you have this honest and open communication. Yeah. I am going because I need to pick up that child. Yeah. I am going because my child is sick. I'm not, you know, moving away or and disappearing for a few hours without communicating that, right? And we encourage that. Yeah. Parenting out loud. I mean, really we talk important. about the benefits of psychological safety inside organisations, and just being able to. And I, I know you, I've been fortunate to work. I've worked for some bad organisations, but I've also, when it's done well, when your line manager turns around and goes, "Family first. Yeah. Family always comes first. So you feel that even at, you know, 5.30 when the whistle blows, 
you can leave your desk and go home to your children, even though you've just done your 12 hours, not even yeah. leaving early. Because so often organizations get caught in this, who, you know, this yeah. competition of who can stay at their and desk that's what the longest. flexibility is, yeah. right? So most parents that I know will leave to go and do childcare responsibilities, the second job as we call it, right? Mm -hmm. And then if they need to finish something, they're probably picking it up after the child sleeps. Yeah. That's their prerogative and that's okay. Yeah. They're getting the job done. They're also balancing what they need to do, right? We're seeing more of, more of that. But they value that as well. I've been there and literally, you know, I've worked till three o'clock in the morning to deliver a project. If I've been able to go, you know, have the afternoon off to go to the sports day. You know, as a parent, you actually value that. You're yeah. grateful for that. And it's actually cost the organization nothing. It's choice. To do right? that. It's Except choice. It's giving choice. You're going to deliver better work yeah. because you're not rushing to do it within a certain not time. Not only frame. that, you're going to feel seen. Yeah. You're going to feel heard. That's so valuable. Yeah. Right. So, so who, who wouldn't want to be in a workplace where you feel seen and heard and where your leader is inspiring and moving away from command and control? I think Lucy Darbo, who was on your panel at the Impact Report um, launch, talked about discretionary effort as well. Yeah. The fact that, and again, that has, I guess that ties into what Dr. Salia was saying about present parents make present yeah. employees. Just that the buy-in you get when you need it. So your employees are not always on, but yeah. when you need them to go 110, 120%, yeah. the fact that you've built that flexibility into your, into your yeah. organization, you suddenly access a whole bunch of discretionary Definitely. effort, which is... You know, parents bring such amazing skills that are so transferable into the workplace. So as a parent, especially parents to young children, you are experienced in conflict management, you bring project management experience, yeah. um, <laughs> you're a mentor, right? Yeah. Negotiating skills, all these beautiful skills that are really wanted in the workplace, yeah. right? So Scott, a few years ago, I finally got the courage to add mother to my LinkedIn profile, okay? And I was like, what am I doing? You know, this is really strange. I haven't seen this before. Yeah, yeah. But think about it. All the skills I gained as a parent, yeah. Okay, Absolutely. how to uh, anger management, yeah. how to, you know, sibling, how to manage sibling rivalry, right? <laughs> Dealing you, empathy, all of those skills. If you negotiate with my eight-year-old, she <laughs> wins every time, so I'm not getting that job. But So adding you, it, yeah. I, got, I got a reaction, a positive reaction from yeah. a lot of people because I think those skills are transferable Absolutely. into the workplace yeah. and they need to be seen. Parents need to be seen. Stay with that for a as second. A, as well. an added value in the workplace. Because if I'm, you know, for organizations that might be tuning into this, let's, let, let's just have a little look into the future. We are now in, you know, um, the age of AI, you know, and a lot of our, a lot of jobs, a lot of roles are going to get, you know, automated or innovated through AI. So it is the human skills. It's that humanity is going to be the thing that sets us apart. You know, that, that's the thing that the algorithm can't do. So actually, you having the confidence to put mother on, you think the human resources, which is a phrase I hear anyway, um, humans aren't resources, they're humans. Um, but that would be, yeah. I'd be, you know, we should be looking for that parent, mother, human, as yeah. opposed to... And I think to, a lot of people listening to this may have had that career gap, right? Yeah. Where you've stepped out for a while, whether you're a father or, or a mother, yeah. stepped out to start a family, to raise, to focus on your children. And a lot of people are hesitant to bring that up in, uh, in, in, in a job interview. Yeah. We should be welcoming that. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, especially I want to hear about what, how you grew as a person. What was your journey like? What experiences did you, could you bring to this workplace from that gap? You right? just remind me of one of my first questions, which, you, which we didn't, and I, it was probably because I interrupted you. But what was your journey like? Um, I mean, when, I, when I asked what inspired you to really embrace this mission, yeah. what was it that you know, shaped that so, enthusiasm? So definitely working for the Abu Dhabi Early Childhood Authority, the purpose drew me in. Yeah. Um, I have two children, I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old, and my first child I had, uh, I was living in another country, not my own. Yeah. Uh, I had him in the dead of winter. It was minus 37 outside, <sighs> try and guess, it was Canada. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I was a student at the same time, I was doing an executive MBA. And so this notion of having your support network around you, yeah. um, you know, it's just my husband and I, yeah. uh, means the world. And uh, just being a part of the parent-friendly label 
and advocating for parent-friendly workplaces. I have a personal stake in that. I personally believe in it. And I know it's resonated with so many parents out there, right? So our biggest champions, Scott, when we do approach uh, organizations to apply to earn the label have been that parent sitting in HR. Yeah. You know, yeah, and oftentimes yeah. it's been a single parent or a parent who's going through, uh, uh, someone unemployed who's going through divorce who understands and gets it, right? Who understands the value of a nursing room. And that when you need to, to pump breast milk, you need to do that, yeah. right? Uh, the, the importance of not missing a child's sports game or a winter concert or their National Day celebration and what that means and how you're not going to get that day back. And that's the day the children are going to remember when they're older. If we focus back on those 17 organizations, um, what have you seen them do? Like, can you give us any kind of case studies of the yeah. way they've, that, that you've really gone, yeah, these guys. So there's a story that I never forget. It's one from one of the organizations that earned the label, yeah. the parent-friendly label recently. And they're right here in the UAE in the private sector. Yeah. And um, this is the story of a three-year-old uh, child. Uh, I'll call him Sam. And Sam, uh, leukemia became his reality uh, when he was three. Wow. And it became the reality of his parents, very unexpectedly, of course. Yeah. And his, work, his father's workplace was so understanding. And they uh, put their money where their mouth is, so to speak, right? So they granted him paid compassionate leave, an extended one, so that he can be with his son through the healing journey. Yeah. And he can stand by his wife in that journey. They, gave, they made sure that his insurance covers his child's treatments, okay? That affected the employee so much and his loyalty levels to that organization that he went back, worked so hard, he's now partner at that organization, and he was inspired him and his wife to start an NGO that supports parents like them yeah. who have children going through cancer. Wow. And so not only did from, this workplace support yeah. this parent, right? They got back business out business yeah. benefits. Yeah. They supported the UAE community. They inspired him to do something good for the so community. So genuinely is good business yeah. to be good business on almost every yeah. level. Another example that really also stuck in my mind from the pandemic was this organization that um, realized that a lot of their employees had were had children who were doing distance learning and it was a curveball for all of us, right? So it was something new for all of us. And this workplace immediately went into action and provided a fund for ergonomic furniture for those children oh, okay. because they didn't have the setup, right? Yeah, distance yeah. learning, people were working off the dining uh, yeah. table. Yeah. So they provided technology and ergonomic furniture to support young children going through distance learning because they knew how stressful it was for their employees. So they not only were they relieving the stress of their employees, it extended into the family, into the home. Now imagine, as you, as you said earlier, and we've seen the statistics, I think Michael Page, the global recruitment company today, and this is 2022, I think it was, that 50% of the applicants to jobs were asking yeah. about mental health and flexible working and that sort of thing. Imagine being able to answer the question with these kind of case studies. That's how powerful that is. And I just wanted to kind of like ask this question because we focus on trying to make the business case to the CEOs, you know, about the benefits to the PNL. And there's a, a, a study of a hundred different studies that said, you know, the average return on investment is 327%. Let's say, okay, we've reached some CEOs in the head do you think we spend enough time actually these days trying to make the emotional argument for this as well as the financial, that actually this is a win-win on both fronts from an emotional level and a financial? And actually it's really good for organizations yeah. to feel good about themselves. It's a really great question. And what we found in our experience at the Parent Friendly Label is both of these conversations and both of these arguments go hand in hand, right? You can't just think of the business in isolation. The business is made up of people and people have caregiving responsibilities beyond office walls. Yeah. People have emotions. You want to demonstrate empathy in the workplace. And so we've, when we approach organizations, we take both uh, arguments to them, to the CEO, yeah. right? We often find that, uh, we were speaking to a CEO the other day who's the father of six. Okay. And he was the biggest champion of this. But I don't believe you need to be a parent, no. really, to understand the importance of parent-friendly workplaces, right? So today's 
single person might be a parent tomorrow. And so even the survey that we circulate, uh, Scott, as part of the parent-friendly label, the employee survey, yeah. it goes to non-parents as well. Yeah. Their perception matters in terms of whether this culture is parent-friendly. And what that day-to-day -day looks like in terms of a parent-friendly culture, when, let's, talk, let's take fathers, right? So I, sp I spoke about parenting out loud. Having those conversations and being open about, I need to leave because my child is sick, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the culture of this father is on parental leave whether that's three days, whether that's 20 days, respect that time. Don't be yeah. calling him in back into the workplace, yeah. right? So to be honest, when we first mentioned extending uh, leave for fathers, for new fathers, we were met with like smirks and what's he going to do? Some people said, well, he's going to take his passport and travel. He's going to be on vacation. But that's where the culture needs to change. Yeah, yeah. That's where that mentality needs to change. The father has an absolutely crucial role, not only with the newborn, but supporting his wife. You also mentioned around the mental health sort of boost advantage to the to the father of actually being there, and I, th I think that's absolutely vital because we often, and we've on the podcast before, men are isolated and men are cut off at times, and cutting off a man from his newborn child seems yeah. to make no sense to me. That's why we make sure at the parent friendly label, all of our criteria is as inclusive as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So we even. Uh, are encouraging organizations and we assess organizations when it comes to if a, uh, um, a woman has had a miscarriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the past, organizations have immediately thought, okay, I'll give her leave. The father has lost a child too. Yeah. Where is his time to grieve? Yeah. Where is his time to heal? Yeah. He's not fe healing physically, he's no. healing mentally. Yeah. Right? And often, if a father needs to take one day leave to go, he spent maybe doing paperwork, he spent it doing paperwork, yeah. uh, receiving visitors in the hospital, driving maybe his wife to and fro. Where's yeah. the time to heal? Yeah. And that's why we make sure all our criteria is as inclusive as possible and make sure that it's taking into consideration both mothers and fathers. I could talk about this all day. Um, let's just, um, I wanted to circle back on um, that connection to the UE's core values and its mission. Um, wh how do you think the parent-friendly label really feeds in to the overall message, mission, values of the UE and its future? Where does this, what does this grow into? Yeah, yeah. so at the parent-friendly label, we're very blessed and very grateful that it's, it's His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the UAE, who personally honours the organisations and hands them the parent-friendly yeah. label. Yeah. And we're so happy to have that uh, support. Yeah. We're really, really thankful for that. And it really shows that there's strategic importance here, yeah. right? The country is it making a clear message. It comes from the top of the yeah. top, right? Yeah. And the clear message is we want to support working families of all backgrounds, yeah. right? So even Scott, when the Abu Dhabi Early Childhood Authority was first set up, they asked his highness, is this an entity that's going to focus only on Emirati children? And his highness said, no, their children are our children. This is an entity, a government entity that looks after every child, especially the focus is on zero to eight because that's the most important yeah, absolutely. age group. One other question I kind of want to ask, which is possibly, I, I don't think it's a cheeky question to ask, but right now your program is a voluntary program. Yeah. You know, you are encouraging organizations to sign up. Do you see, or what do you, because when I look at the direction of travel here in the UAE from every single individual I speak to, particularly in government, but the direction of travel is only, only seems to be in one way, which is more well-being, more people thriving, not going backwards back to, you know, the, you know, a hundred years ago, that Victorian steel mill mentality. Yeah. It's just moving forward so talent, human beings can thrive. Do you see, or... Should organizations be prepared for the fact that one day this might actually be mandatory? Look, what we're seeing, Scott, here in the UAE are these organizations are being proactive. They're starting the conversations internally about parent-friendly workplaces. They're realizing the business benefits attached to it. Yep. And that's really commendable. And they're standing out in the market because of that. They're able to stand out in their industry. They're sharing their stories. They're inspiring others. Uh, Talent is looking at their career websites, right? They're wanting to apply to them. And we're hearing that from them. They're yeah. getting a lot of interest in terms of people wanting to work for them and be associated with their brand. That's something that we encourage companies to be proactive about. Don't wait until you have to do it. Yeah. This yeah. is the time now. It's completely free to apply for that parent-friendly label. It's a learning journey. You're gonna learn so much about your organization when you embark on this journey. We had a lot of organizations who weren't collecting the number of children that their employees had. 
They and start, they didn't even know how many children they had. And we were asking how many of your employees even had children of determination. Yeah. But that's changing. Yeah. Organizations now are more aware of why that's important. Should an organization want to apply? What's the call to action? How do they do it? So their first step is go to our website and get familiar with the criteria. There's 19 criteria, right? But they can fall under five categories. Parental leave, flexible work, parental well-being, family care, and culture. Get familiar with the criteria. We have a really, really simple to use criteria tool on our website. Okay. Do your internal self-assessment, uh, assess your organization, start the conversation with management, and start your application online. The deadline for this cycle is September 2nd. September 2nd. So you don't have a lot of time. It's going to be the summer holidays. That's going to come around sooner than you think. It's still June. Still June. <laughs> summer but officially is July and August, yeah, so you do still, have some time. That's, that's going to come around quicker. And so we're happy to guide you. We've guided yeah. a lot of organizations so far. Yeah. And you have nothing to lose because you get this free feedback report that's, that emphasizes your strengths and areas of weakness. And that can be your conversation piece with your management. If you do feel your management still resistant to parent-friendly policies, use that feedback report to get the conversation going. Okay, final question. Um, what's the future? Big question. God, uh, if we uh, only future. knew, huh? Uh, yeah, no, future, <laughs> future goals for the parent-friendly label. How do you, um, where do you see it growing? What do you see it growing into? How do you want to expand its impact? We want to reach a day where we don't need to even incentivize companies to do this, that it becomes part and part of their work, right? It becomes part and part of the way they do things, the DNA of the organization. So when we talk about changing mindsets yeah. and culture, it becomes part of the way you do things. So regardless of whether you're, you've merged with another organization, the leadership has changed, this is who you are as a company, yeah. right? You put people first and you understand that it's good for business. That's what we want to aim for. Well, that really does feel like a mic drop moment. Uh, Layla, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank I mean, you, Scott. I'm, Enjoyed so it. Thank in you so much. the work you're doing at the, uh, uh, Thank you. uh, the Parent Freddy label. So uh, more power to you. If you've enjoyed this conversation as much as I have, remember that you can subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, the button is just there. Click it. It takes a second. Of course, we're on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts. So continue to follow us. Uh, once again, Layla, thank, thank you, you Scott. for joining us on the Mental Space Podcast. Pleasure.